history on this day when the Australian Touring Car Championships recommence for 1994 that our Berger legend is the most famous tourer of them all, Peter Brock. Australian motor racing folklore, Peter Brock is a living legend. After more than two decades at the top of local touring car competition, Brock is a genuine household name, with a level of popularity amongst his loyal fans that politicians could only ever dream about. This year, Holden's prodigal son returns to the factory team after seven years on his own, and the great man is clearly inspired by the reunion. Well, it's a, it's a delightful feeling, actually, because... Uh... I did enjoy those years, and I felt that uh, with that level of support that uh, I'd had, that uh, it, was, it does make a considerable difference, I think, to your fortunes on the track. And uh, to be back again is fantastic because uh, there really is a buzz around the place. For Peter Jeffrey Brock, that motor racing buzz has been a lifelong addiction. Born in February 1946, his obsession with driving cars was clearly evident from an early age. This home-built Austin 7 jalopy was Brock's first taste of motoring freedom, pounding around the family farm at Hurstbridge in rural Victoria. Brock soon progressed to the racetracks and made a stunning impression with an ungainly Austin A30 sports sedan, winning a remarkable 102 races over 65 meetings. His raw talent was soon harnessed by the factory-backed Holden dealer team, and from 1969, Peter Brock and GMH became synonymous with success. With three national touring car titles that includes a record-breaking 34 race wins and 50 pole positions, plus nine Bathurst victories, Brock is clearly Australia's most successful touring car star. With such abundant skill and natural talent, many fans wish Brock had ventured overseas at a young age to chase international success. But Brock has never regretted his decision to stay put. I found that uh, very early on I was um, signed up by Holden to drive for Holden dealer team and Harry Firth virtually at the beginning of my motor racing career I think I'd probably been racing for 18 months when I got my first works drive with uh, with Holden so it was um, inevitable that my my life would be intertwined I suppose with the Australian motor racing scene so I never really had any regrets uh, although I, I don't want that to sound as if uh, I didn't have the, the greatest admiration for the tenacity and patience for people such as Alan Jones, who virtually gave up uh, you know, 10 years of their life to get established in England. The Brock legend has been built purely on touring car racing, and few can claim to match the sheer finesse, mechanical sympathy, and fluid driving style of Brock when it comes to getting the best out of them. He is unashamedly a sedan specialist. The transformation from shopping car to racing car remains for him a fascinating science. When I drive a touring car and I, I get around the top of the mountain at Bathurst, you feel like the touring car isn't uh, perhaps capable of, of uh, these g-forces and the loads that we're putting through it. But as a racing driver, you get this thing by the scruff of the neck and you say, right, okay, we're not down the supermarket today, we're on this racetrack and you're going to do what I'm going to tell you to do. So the challenge for a race driver, I think, driving a touring car is to take a piece of machinery it's not designed for that task and through sheer i think uh, control over what that car uh, is you make it do something that it can't do and that to me is the challenge of touring car racing brock's personal record of unforgettable wins reads like an encyclopedia of success his outstanding victories against the odds at bathurst in 1972 and many years later in 1987 rate amongst his most treasured wins he has raced against and beaten the best touring car drivers in the world, yet still rates a well-known local driver as his most feared and respected opponent. Alan Moffat. Yeah, Alan Moffat would have to be. I mean, he's not a natural driver. Uh, a driver who achieved that, that level of success, that ability through sheer persistence. You know, if you could beat him, you, you finish up on Sunday night saying, that's a pretty good day's work. That's a pretty good day's work today. We, we, we managed to, um, to uh, I suppose, overcome that intensity. In 1994, Peter Brock's illustrious career has turned full circle, and he is revelling in his return to the factory Holden Drive that brought him and GMH so much success. 
At 48 years of age, Brock is in the twilight of his career, but is determined to serve out his time as a fast and consistent winner. He hopes, too, that his remarkable winning record is remembered for being achieved through a special sporting quality. Um, playing the game of the straight bat, I think, uh, more than anything else. Uh, being, um, I suppose, doing it with the, with the utmost integrity that I can, I can manage. And I suppose that um, if someone said, gee, when adversity strikes, you can still sort of uh, keep a smile on your face and pick up the positive uh, issues out of what was, I suppose, to all intents and purposes, a fairly disastrous sort of activity. Um, that, to me, is an important example to leave for younger people. Mark Osler, reporting for Sports World. One of the legends of Australian sport, not only motor racing, Peter Brock back with the Holden Dealers team, qualified seventh on the grid yesterday. Thomas Mazira, fifth, his teammate. They're in with a chance this year. And the touring cars today, the first round, just check your local guides for telecast details. It's going to be one of the most competitive races because Amaru Park is pretty tight. And they're already saying, uh, the stewards are saying, be careful the way you drive. We'll take a break.